Well, that's it. I'm starting a new sketchbook, even though my others aren't finished yet. And I know that's breaking my own rules, but I got invited to be in the sketchbook project show at the Kansas City Arts Coalition. And Casey AC always had a special place in my heart back in Kansas City. It's where I sold my first painting after my senior thesis. And I've got my work cut out for me with this sketchbook. I have to have it done by early April in order for it to participate in this show, which means I really need to get to work. It's a 60 page sketchbook. And that means I'm gonna have to work a lot faster than I'm used to. So I'm gonna bring this sketchbook on an upcoming backpacking trip and I've been trying to quell my materials to be as lightweight as possible for my backpack since I'm going to be carrying shelter and food and water in the desert, which means I don't necessarily want to be weighed down by my work. But I've been thinking a lot about the Rose Art portable art set I had as a kid and how that is the perfect example of what I want to have with me when I'm out on the trail. So let's swatch materials and see how they work in this sketchbook. So I am going to use these double-sided Olo markers. These are a really great alternative to bringing paints out in the landscape because you don't need water, <laughs> which is gonna be especially helpful in the desert. And these are double-sided. So they function kind of like a Copic sketch alcohol-based marker, but they're so small and they screw together that I can actually have two markers in the same space as one, which is super ideal. Last year, while I was hiking in the summertime in California, I took notes about the colors that I saw, and that's what helped me develop this palette that I'll be taking out with me to Joshua Tree National Park. I've never been to Joshua Tree. I've never been backpacking before, and so I'm both super excited and a little bit scared of what I have ahead of me. Next up, we have colored pencils. These are the couple that I pulled out of my giant Prismacolor kit. And so I'm gonna go ahead and swatch those here as well. I've been trying to think about not just the colors of the desert during the daytime, but also what colors I might observe at night. Sunset is going to be truly gorgeous there. And one of the other things I'm really, really excited for is the potential for stargazing. So I grew up in the city of Chicago, and for me, light pollution has always been a big part of my life. I actually used to find it pretty beautiful, and I still kind of do, but there's nothing like seeing a starry night sky, and I'm really looking forward to being able to see that in the desert. Okay, so I have markers, I have colored pencils, I have two of the main things from the Rose Art kit, but there's another thing I need. I'm gonna need a pencil sharpener. And that's where my exacto blade comes in. So I just use this to sharpen my pencils and it allows me to get a really nice sharp tip. If you try this, be careful, but it's fun. I wouldn't be leaning into my inner kid if I didn't have some crayons. So I'm gonna take some of these Crayon Arche wax pastels and swatch those as well. These will really help my wrist so that way I'm not using too much pressure to cover pages up. But as you can see, I'm getting quite a bit of bleed here. While this paper is very thin, it's making me wonder if it will accept gouache and if I can use gouache on these reverse sides. So I'm gonna get my gouache travel set out here and do some tests and see if it likes gouache. First, I start with my lemon yellow. And the paper is buckling just a tiny bit, but I'm actually surprised at how well it's accepting the gouache. All right, we get a little bit of coverage here, not perfect, but oh, wait. Oh, heck yeah. Okay, awesome. This looks like it's absolutely going to work for me to work with gouache on the opposite pages. So I am super excited about this. And here I'm celebrating with my sketchbook writing. Yes, it works. I have this neat little travel cup that I'll be able to use hoping to use this on our one night of car camping before we start our backpacking trip. The troublemaker has arrived. All right, let's work on a test or more or less a warm-up sketch. 
So if you've seen photos of Joshua Tree National Park online, you've probably seen a lot of the jumbo rocks. So I found a picture of one on Pinterest and I'm using that as a reference to just get a little bit of a feel for how these rocks are shaped, how I might want to render them, what materials I might need. And it's also helping me realize that maybe I have all of the right materials or maybe there's a couple of colors that I need to make sure that I add to my little color palette that I have here. My kit is simple and it's helping me realize as I'm working on this that I do have some redundancies. Like I have maybe too many of the same shade of orange and I don't quite have enough variation in my darker colors but this cool gray looks really nice on top of this kind of peachy toned alcohol marker drawing in one of the joshua trees adding in some more marks yeah i needed to bring that purple in and that's definitely going to come along with me one of the first bits of instruction for the sketchbook project is to make a mark on every page which I didn't want to do, but instead my cat Lupin decided to help me do that. She spilled my paint water all over the sketchbook and now I'm having to adapt to a slightly less precious set of pages to work with. Here is what we are looking at now. So after she spilled that water on it, that gouache definitely melted onto my drawing that I made yesterday. But this is a sketchbook, right? It's not a perfect piece of artwork and that's okay. So we're gonna adapt. So a couple of things that I wanna check in with y'all about. First things first, the sketchbook is okay. Lupin did not ruin it. Um, luckily my obsessive need to tape off the edges really helped. It's got a little bit of buckling and some of the pages are not perfect, but I think that will help it actually be a sketchbook instead of just being this like perfect object that I have the tendency to make sketchbooks into. I want to update you all. I have launched my shop on my website, which is really exciting. Originally, back in November, when I was first launching my art business, I decided to go with Etsy. Um, and after several months of not seeing any sales, I say that knowing that the advantage to Etsy is that Etsy is a platform that in theory should help market your work, right? Um, they're supposed to help you get your work out there. That's why you're paying them the fees. That's, that's all of these things, right? Um, but two things happened. The first is that one of my best friends who is primarily um, a, a seamstress, a fiber artist, a fashion designer, really told me some things that friends of hers in her industry have had a bad time with Etsy. Then they did me dirty. So I have been hosting these sip and sketch sessions that have been really fun. It's been a great way to get to know the community in Sonoma County a little bit more around where I teach art in the farm. But what happened is I sold a print of one of my works and I got really excited. It was one of my new paintings. I was really pumped at who it was going to. I sent them an invoice using my payment processor Square and all of a sudden I got charged a listing fee by Etsy for selling something in person. And that made me realize that Etsy is just, it's, that's not it. <laughs> That's that's just that's just not it for me. Um, I primarily want to sell my work in person at markets around the Bay Area. And so the last thing that I need is every single time I'm making a sale at a market, I'm giving Etsy a, a fee, even if it's 20 cents. That 20 cents is really going to add up. And so I launched my own shop. So the shop is in the link in the description. And primarily what I'm going to be selling on there are my art cards that I had printed. So they are all based based on different hikes that I've gone on either in the Redwoods, here around the Bay Area, either in Northern California, like my Fern Canyon painting that I made uh, in my first YouTube video. And they also are each gonna come with some prompts. So I spent <laughs> quite a bit of time cutting out and writing all of these tiny little prompts that I'm including with each card because I wanna encourage letter writing. A very sweet thing that my grandmother used to do before she passed 
is that she would write me letters on any card she could find. Now, my grandmother had a little bit of a dollar store habit, and so she would always go to the dollar store and find a card with a cat on it, and that would get sent to me. Or she would find a card for International Teacher's Day. Anything that she could find a card of, and if she thought of me, she would send me a card. And I would always have some little tiny word of encouragement, and that's the thing that I relied on her for. She always was there, willing to give me those little bits of encouragement. And so what I want to encourage you to do is to give those bits of encouragement to your friends through actual real-life snail mail. I really like buying fun stamps at the post office. I love getting mail. I love sending mail. And so... I'm gonna read you a couple of these prompts that I think you might resonate with. Here's one. Have you gone through an immense change, pivot, or shift in your life? How did that experience shape you? And how could that benefit the person who's receiving this card? Are they going through change or a shift? Could your story help impact them or give them a positive idea of where to go next? Read one more. Who? perfect. Where is a place that you are excited to explore or see soon? Can you share your excitement with your recipient? I need to get better at sending cards like this myself. I find myself doing the thing where I think I'm checking in on my friends by just looking at their Instagram stories or what they post on TikTok, but that is not checking on your friends. That's not making sure your friends are doing okay. So, you know, send your friends a text, check on them. How are they doing? When's the last time y'all did a little uh, FaceTime check-in together? I want to encourage you to deepen your relationships by writing letters so that way the things you get in the mail aren't just spam, credit card offers, bills. Instead, the things that you're getting in the mail are actually making you excited and making your friends excited too. Next up, we have to talk about some new paintings. So I have a couple of additional YouTube videos in the works of processes behind some of my new paintings, and I'm so excited about how they're turning out. I got a new gouache set that I mentioned in a couple videos back, and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. The results I'm getting from these paintings are just blowing my mind. So I want to share not just my art, but also answer some of your questions. You know, I went to art school, I ran a couple galleries, I used to run an arts publication, so I used to be an art critic. So if you have questions about painting, about art writing, uh, leave them in the comments. I would love to answer any questions that you have and then help though that conversation actually be a part of the videos that I'm sharing, my process, and how I'm making my work. So that way, you're not just getting the benefit of watching my process, but I also get to give you something in return. So yeah, any questions that you have, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer those in a future video. In those couple of future videos, I will be featuring some of these new paintings. Here's one of the fairy mushrooms in Tilden Park that I'm really, really pumped about. I'll throw a high definition image right here. Yeah, I I can't believe what good artist squash is capable of. I also have been revisiting interiors. So I know I mentioned I'm mostly an adventure artist. So I mostly go around, go on hikes, explore, take photos, come back to my studio and make work. But now I am realizing that I really miss when I was making interiors, when I was thinking about the home as a self-portrait. So I have made a couple of these paintings in gouache. So this is my friend Moret's apartment back in Kansas City. And then I also did one of my old home in Kansas City as well. So I will be sharing the videos on how I made these paintings and the entire process. But again, if you have questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. All right, cool. Last thing we have is to talk about that backpacking set. I need a new container. So I have currently this really nice pencil case from Maker Goods. It's made out of leather and it's a marbled print on the leather. So it's gorgeous. I love it. But 
It is kind of a black hole and it's a little heavy. So with backpacking, you are carrying water, your food, your shelter, your clothes, everything literally on your back. And I'm a small person, so I have a weight limit that I have to meet. So I'm gonna go to my favorite little shop, Daiso. I mentioned that my grandmother was a dollar store girly. I am a Daiso human. I really like going to Daiso and they are, known for having some really, truly incredible pencil cases. But I need to find things that these these materials will fit into. So I need something that's going to be long enough for my Olo markers to fit into. I want to be able to see my colored pencils without them getting broken. But I also am hoping that I can find something really tiny and small that will keep my wax pastels in a good shape. So with that, let's go to Daiso. All right, so here we are at my local Daiso. Daiso is essentially like a dollar store, but everything is through the lens of Japanese decor and aesthetics. So we've got stickers galore. I ended up almost picking these guys up here, but I resisted, just barely. Found a potential contender here for a pencil case, but I definitely need to keep looking. Another potential contender here. I almost went with this one, but I was afraid that the big zipper would let everything fall out. There's lots of paper and organizational supplies and washi tape galore. Also resisted that. <laughs> and then I found the pencil cases, and this is where I did quite a bit of investigation. And here's what we came home with. So I got this B7 vinyl mesh case for my pastels. I got this one for my colored pencils and then this main mesh one for all of my markers and then for everything else to fit into as well. So let's get these unpackaged and get some supplies in there.
All right, and here's the final set. I'm really happy with how lightweight this is and how much I was able to fit. I even realized that I was able to fit my entire sketchbook in here too. So if you liked this video, follow along, maybe give it a like, comment down below and say why you liked it. And until next time, stay creative. And hopefully this inspires you to create your own minimalist sketchbook kit and get out there and make some art. Have a good one.